Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So late last night, Bill Barr attempted his own little Friday night massacre when he tried to fire the U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York, Jeffrey Berman. Jeffrey Berman said, yeah, not so fast, Mr. Attorney General. You didn't put me in this position and you're not lawfully entitled to fire me. So today, Bill Barr followed up by saying, okay, that may be so, but I told the president to fire you, so now consider yourself fired. Get out. What is it that has prompted this dramatic firing of the U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York? Hold on tight, because it is ugly, folks. First of all, the Southern District of New York is one of 94 U.S. Attorney's offices, all within the Department of Justice, and it's a fiercely independent office known to be pretty aggressive in its prosecutions, and it's earned the nickname the Sovereign District of New York. And Jeffrey Berman has been the U.S. Attorney for about two and a half years now, and his office has handled some really consequential cases, many of them sort of involving the president, like the Michael Cohen prosecution, where Michael Cohen pled guilty to committing felony campaign finance violations together with Donald Trump. Of course, the Department of Justice Office of Legal Counsel tells us we can't prosecute a sitting criminal president, so Donald Trump hasn't yet been, been held accountable for those crimes he committed with Michael Cohen. That will have to wait until January. The Southern District of New York is also investigating Deutsche Bank. Yes, that Deutsche Bank, one of the only banks that was still willing to loan Donald Trump money after he defaulted on so many loans and declared bankruptcy so many times. The Southern District of New York has a criminal investigation into Deutsche Bank. The Southern District of New York is also investigating the Trump Inaugural Committee. Why? Because surprise, they're alleged to have taken foreign money unlawfully. And of course, SDNY is also prosecuting Rudy Giuliani's business partners, Lev Parnas and Igor Fruman, and SDNY is criminally investigating Rudy Giuliani himself. And then there's a lesser known prosecution. It's a prosecution of a bank, a bank that is owned by the Turkish government. It's called Halk Bank. Now, President Erdogan of Turkey is really upset that prosecutors are, are bringing charges, have brought charges against a state-owned Turkish bank. And the government of Turkey has been lobbying the United States mightily, trying to get the U.S. to drop those charges against Halk Bank. What have we learned in recent days from some of the excerpts that have been released from John Bolton's book that bear on the question of why Bill Barr and Donald Trump are hell-bent on getting rid of Jeff Berman as the U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York? Well, there was an article in the New York Times reporting out some of what John Bolton said that is relevant to this question, and it reads as follows. Mr. Bolton described several episodes where the president, Donald Trump, expressed a willingness to halt criminal investigations to, in effect, give personal favors to dictators he liked. Bolton cited cases that fall into that category of Donald Trump doing favors for dictators he liked as cases coming out of China and Turkey. Bolton said, the pattern looked like obstruction of justice as a way of life, which we couldn't accept. And what did John Bolton do with this information of presidential crimes and corruption and abuse doing favors for dictators? Well, he disclosed it to the Attorney General William P. Barr. And it gets worse because John Bolton just gave an interview to ABC's Martha Raddatz, and I think it will run tomorrow evening, but they've been re releasing clips. And John Bolton tells Martha Raddatz that there were a number of conversations between Donald Trump and the president of Turkey, President Erdogan. Get ready because Donald Trump
told President Erdogan when he was complaining about the prosecution of Halk Bank? Trump said, yeah, the Southern District of New York people, those are Obama people. Wait until I get my people in there and we'll take care of that. Hmm. How dirty, how corrupt, how abusive. So what does Bill Barr do with this information about presidential crimes being reported by John Bolton? Well, here's what Bill Barr does. He issues a Friday night press release announcing his Friday night massacre. Quote, I am pleased to announce that President Trump intends to nominate Jay Clayton, currently the chairman of the Securities and Exchange Commission, to serve as the next United States Attorney for the Southern District of New York. Let me pause here because Jay Clayton, the chief of the SEC, has never been a prosecutor, never prosecuted a case, not a traffic ticket, not a jaywalking citation. And they're going to make him the head of perhaps the most consequential prosecution office in the country? Bill Barr's Friday Night Massacre memo continues. On my recommendation, the president has appointed Craig Carpen Carpenito, currently the United States Attorney for the District of New Jersey, to serve as the acting United States Attorney for the Southern District of New York while the Senate is considering Jay Clayton's nomination. Wait a minute, another pause here. That's not the way any of this works. Ordinarily, when you have a perfectly good U.S. attorney in place, Jeffrey Berman, he remains in place until the Senate can confirm this new guy, the non-prosecutor, Jay Clayton, to take over. But instead, Bill Barr says, no, no, no. The president on my recommendation is gonna take the U.S. attorney in New Jersey make him come across the river, be the acting U.S. attorney in the Southern District of New York, while he's still U.S. attorney in New Jersey. Why? Because they want Jeffrey Berman out the door like yesterday. Bill Barr's Friday Night Massacre press release continues. Finally, I want to thank Jeff, Jeffrey Berman, who is stepping down after two and a half years of service as the United States Attorney for the Southern District of New York. Oh, really? Let's see what Jeffrey Berman has to say about that, because he promptly issued his own statement. Jeffrey Berman said, quote, I have not resigned, and I have no intention of resigning my position, to which I was appointed by the judges of the United States District Court for the Southern District of New York. I will step down when a presidentially appointed nominee is confirmed by the Senate. And then he adds the money line. Until then, our investigations will move forward without delay or interruption, close quote. Let me unpack that a little bit because Jeffrey Berman was not nominated by Donald Trump and confirmed by the Senate. Donald Trump never got around to that. So instead, the law allows the judges in the jurisdiction where that U.S. attorney's office is located, those federal court judges under the law can name an interim U.S. attorney. And they did that. They named Jeffrey Berman. That's how Jeffrey Berman became U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York. And the law says, because that's the way he became U.S. attorney, the attorney general can't fire him. But it looks like perhaps the president can. That's an open question of law. There may be some more chatter about that in the coming days. But as of right now, the president's like, open question of law or not, I am firing you right now. And the president has done that. So we see what's going on here. We see why Bill Barr and Donald Trump are showing Jeffrey Berman the door. We know from John Bolton's book that the president told President Erdogan of Turkey, oh, you don't like our prosecution against Halk Bank in the Southern District of New York? Those are Obama people. Wait until I get my people in there and we'll take care of that. Not to mention all the other prosecutions that are touching Donald Trump in some potentially very damaging ways, whether it's Rudy Giuliani or Michael Cohen or Deutsche Bank or the Trump Inauguration Committee. 
So he's installing a lackey, a non-prosecutor who has no business being U.S. attorney in the Southern District of New York or anywhere else. And you know what this reminds me of, folks? It reminds me of exactly what Bill Barr did to my old office, the D.C. U.S. Attorney's Office, when he yanked Jesse Liu, the U.S. Attorney, out of there and he installed his lackey, Tim Shea. And what did Tim Shea as the U.S. Attorney for D.C. go about doing? Well, the first thing he did was he told the prosecutors on the Roger Stone case, I don't care what kind of a sentencing recommendation you made, you've got to go lighter on Roger Stone, the president's criminal associate, prompting that whole prosecution team, four prosecutors, to walk off that case. What was the next thing Tim Shea, Bill Barr's lackey, did when Shea yanked U.S. Attorney Jesse Liu out of the job and put Tim Shea into the job? He signs a dismissal memo trying to get rid of the Mike Flynn case, another one of the president's criminal associates. We see what y'all are doing, and you're not going to get away with it. Bill Barr is a corrupt lawman right now, and he's not a savvy criminal. I prosecuted 30, 30 years worth of criminals. Some are, some are far more savvy than Bill Barr. We see what Bill Barr's doing. He's not trying to hide this corruption. And he thinks he's going to get away with it because he's in power, but only at the moment. Because in the history of our country, plenty of corrupt lawmen who were in power at the moment fell out of power and were held accountable for their corruption. That is what will happen to Bill Barr come January. Here's what I hope we see happen in the coming days. Representative Nadler, chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, has a hearing set for Wednesday at which prosecutors and Department of Justice lawyers are going to testify about Bill Barr's corrupt polit politization of the Department of Justice, including one of the prosecutors from the Roger Stone case. Given what's happened over the last 24 hours with Bill Barr and Donald Trump trying to oust Jeffrey Berman, Chairman Nadler has invited Jeffrey Berman to come testify and let's hope he takes Chairman Nadler up on that invitation because for gosh sake, somebody's got to stand up and say something about the corruption being perpetrated by Bill Barr. We're trying to keep our republic here. It ain't easy. But we need people to stand up, to step up, and to expose Bill Barr and Donald Trump and the rest of the criminal cabal for the corrupt folks that they are. As always, folks, please stay safe. And I look forward to talking to you again tomorrow.